Hey guys, Mad Science here, and today I am back in another subreddit. Today I'm going to be doing Entitled Parents. Basically, it's a place where yeah, stories of hey, I have kids, I'm entitled to everything, come to exist. Uh, so I'm going to be covering the top six today because. That some of them can get longer than usual. So, six for today. And first one up on the list. AK sexually assaults my daughter. Finds out the hard way she's been taught to take care of herself. Now I hear science as the principal mulls over what I have just said. I can tell they are going to justify this weak tea bullshit. I compose myself. So here's what's going to happen next. Yeah, either punish both, or punish none of them. Because I promise you the last thing you want me in my... is me in my dress A's and TV reporters showing up and blasting your whole school over this. Now I can understand that her punching this brat is unacceptable, but what I will not take is neither... and neither will she, is him not being punished as well. Do I make myself clear? Also, why are you calling me and not her mother? Well, Mr. Turn Terminator, she told us to call you. You listen to me, and you listen good. I swear to you, and God, I will not put up with this. I demand a meeting with you, her, fu her teacher, and this boy's family. If I can't make it, my ex-wife will. If this isn't resolved to my liking, I'll bring a holy hell upon this whole stick house you've built. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Good. Call my ex, let her know the date, the time and date. We'll coordinate from there. I hang up and call my ex. She agrees with me and I go back to work. About... A work week later, there is a meeting, but unfortunately I have work and my ex has to go in for me. From what I am told, this boy's family tries to play it off as boys will be boys and tries to get my door expelled. There are times when I remember why I married my ex and this is one of them. She proceeds to tell him that the last thing any of them want is me to get more involved than I already have and that if I have to, I'll bring it all burning down. Every brick. Outcome was both were suspended for four days and the boy moved to a different class. And I never got a call like that again. Moral of the story? My kids, my kids are badass and got a cake for sticking up for herself and a lot of love on both ends of me and my ex. Nice! Edit one. Sorry for not being clear. She was seven and a half at the time of the inf She was seven? Seven and a half. Not even eight. Wow. <laughs> for, that, edit two. for those who don't believe me, that's fine. I have nothing to prove or answer for on Reddit of all places. Believe me or not, call me names or not, I didn't write this for upvotes, gold or silver. I wanted to brag about my kid doing what I thought was the right thing. I am not good. I'm not gonna judge if it was real or not, but it's a good story. Like, I'm going to say that it was a real thing that happened. Like, like point number three is don't be an asshole. Okay. That, that was a story. Woo! Let's move on to the next one. I do not care if you have cancer. My son, oh, my child, deserves your seat. This encounter, ha this encounter happened about seven months ago. I do not want to insult your intelligence because you most likely know what EM and me stands for. But I should say that EK in the story stands for embarrassed kid. And OG stands for old gentleman. Six, 
67 year old guy. The kid was very polite and sorry, so this story isn't about him. Also, I'm translating this into English, so bear with me. A little backstory. About a year ago, I was diagnosed with cancer of the nasal cavity stage 2. The tumour was quite large, but faithfully benign. It, people have pointed out that I formulated this wrong. By benign, I wanted to show in the fact it still did not spread into other tissue. Thus, it was still contained. Yeah, that's, that's, that is understandable. <laughs> Which is what I thought the word meant. I apologise for my gaps in knowledge. Yeah, I'm not going to judge you for that. <laughs> to get it removed, I had to undergo aggressive chemotherapy to make it smaller. Thanks to the chemo, I had a severe alopecia, or hair loss, which made most of my hair and even my eyebrows and eyelashes fall out. At some point, I had to go bold. But I wore a wig, because I didn't want to look like a skinhead neo-Nazi. I'm six foot four and pretty muscular, so I thought people would assume, of course. It's Smart, smart choice in that. So once, after a long chemo session in the hospital, I took the bus home. There was only one bus that goes from the hospital to where I live. So I took that one only to see it was absolutely packed. I felt like shit thanks to the chemo, so I asked a middle-aged dude to let me sit. He was very understanding and gave me his spot without complaining. If you're reading this, thanks bro. Awesome dude right there. <laughs> Two steps later, enter E.M. A lovely way. <laughs> yes. Oh, yep. With an I demand a parlor with the CEO haircut. And a 12-some year old kid. It took her roughly five seconds to see the bus was packed. Start, start looking for a free seat, spot me, and start marching on her case. Trying to fit, <laughs> trying to fit the aisle <laughs> between the seats while shoving others aside to get to me. Get out of the way! I need to get, I need to take this person's seat for no reason. When I saw her, I knew I was screwed. She, she then stood next to me and decided to talk to me. This is the conversation that followed. Ian, hey, hey, could you let my kid sit down? You mean me? Hmm? Hold up. I, I need to get the chair. I I got the chair. <laughs> you mean me? Who else? Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm on my way home from the hospital and So are we. Nonsense. The stop was a few kilometers away from the hospital. My boy just broke his leg, and we come straight home from the ER. <laughs> her kid was standing next to her, without any support, really embarrassed. He's, he's standing next to you. Completely fine. Look here, boy. I am 21 years old at the time of the story. My kid deserves to sit down. Look, man, I'm sorry. I, but I just got back from a chemo session in the hospital, and I need to sit down and rest. I then remove, I then move my wig a bit to let us see my bald head. EM then straight up starts yelling in my face. Okay, go against character. Stop making excuses and get off the fucking seat, you fucking skinhead piece of shit. Wow, I'm getting into characters way too much here. Oh my gosh! At this point, I was baffled. I didn't know. I didn't know what to say. The kid was trying to make his mother stop, and we had the whole attention of the bus. She then grabbed me and tried to yank me from my seat. I held on tight and thankfully didn't fall off. Now enter OG, my savior. <laughs> Will you shut the fuck up, you dumb cow? <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to? OG with I told voice. 
stop assaulting other passengers or I will be forced to step in. Also, every dumb moron could see that the dude has cancer. No! He's just a fucking skinhead! He's got no eyebrows, you twat! <laughs> Seems like that really offended the air. She spun around on the spot and threw a bag punch in the OG's face. Oh, I was shocked and in, in disbelief. The whole bus was flabbergasted. And the kid probably wish he'd never been born. OG did something unbelievable. And a golden, sweet armor moment followed. Okay, that's it. Harassing passengers on the bus, physical assault against a passenger, and now assaulting an officer. You're in deep trouble, lady. OG then pulled out a badge and told her to stay where she was. Then he pulled out his phone, called someone, and told her she was being arrested. I couldn't believe it. OG was a bloody cop. At this point, EF was white as a wall. The bus had just come to a stop, so she decided to make a run for it. But, um, but the other passengers blocked her way. She then also got charged with resisting arrest thanks to this. Three stops later, a police car was waiting for the EM and EK. EK told me he was sorry for his mother's behaviour. And I felt sorry for the kid. He wasn't a bad child. Child. His mother. But his mother was a houseborn. Oh my gosh. Oh. OG then talked to me and asked me if I wanted to press charges. To which I gladly said yes. Took a statement and faithfully was kind enough to let me solve everything on the phone. So I didn't have to come to the police station for questioning. In the end, EM got some jail time. I think it was a few months. And some community service. In return, got a good story. I, in return, got a good story to tell and the sweet taste of instant karma. Right now, I'm riding the same bus home. As I just got back home, as I just got back home from the hospital after the checkup, which reminded me of this. A friend who was sitting next to me told me I should post it here. He, as much as myself, also could believe that such people existed. But it seems I proved it to him. Well, I, also, I should also note that the surgery went well. I was declared cancer-free in November, and my hair is slowly returning. Also, I don't need a wig anymore. Nice. EM flips after she reads the post about her daughter and her. Oh no. What's gonna happen? Hello again. I posted a story about my aunt ruining my sister's birthday before yesterday. Turns out she and her daughter is on Reddit and I subscribed to r slash entire parents and read the story. This is what happened last night. Oh no. So I ha there's another story that we haven't read that links to this story. Oh no. Ian called my dad last night about 11, when my dad was half asleep. <laughs> yeah. How could you do this to us? Aren't we family? Did we, why did you shame us like this? It was so many years ago. Couldn't you just let it go? And my dad, and my dad, no idea what she's going on about. So she asks her what happened. To which she tells him that we posted on Reddit about my sister's birthday. My dad doesn't know and doesn't care what Reddit is and asks what's the big deal. Well, you, so your daughters do things without telling you? You should keep an eye on them. Don't let them get out of hand. You should have taught them manners. My name uh, just exposed us and shamed us online. What are you saying? How does she expose you? She hasn't talked to you in years. She, she posted a story about us, and as soon as EC read it, we knew it was about us. I haven't divulged any names in that story. Not even mine. Dad asked me if I did that and why. So it took a total of 15-20 minutes to explain to, to explain to Dad what Reddit is, 
and what I did. I tell them that I have just narrated a story and haven't exposed her identity in any way. So dad just hands me the phone so I can explain it to her. As soon as I say hello, Ian starts screaming at me so loudly that it can be heard outside the phone. You bitch! How could you do that? Who do you think you are? You poison my child and then make it up as if I was overreacting? Take that post down now and apologize for it on that subreddit. If you don't, I know you. If you don't, I'm. I know. I'm. What? If you don't. I think that was supposed to be Will. If you don't, I will. I am gonna sue you. What the fuck? I'm so angry that I just say no. I won't do anything of that sort. And that I would. To see how you can sue me all the way from California. Em, then proceeds to call me and my sister a whore and similar things. My dad takes away the phone and asks her not to ever contact any of us ever again and blocks her. Okay. So, hey there, Aunt Sheila. Hope y'all read this. Hey, there's a link to the previous post. Should I take the time out to read that one? No, I'm going to leave that for you guys to go and check out yourselves. <laughs> I just saw a lady get tasered for trying to snatch a woman's face mask to give to her ch Why? That's a used mask! I argued with my husband about whether or not to post this because I'm pretty sure this will make the local news. And I didn't want to burn this account just yet. But he won RPS. So here we are. Prepare yourselves, this story has layers. Just layers upon layers upon layers. <laughs> okay, here we go. We were at the dreaded big box store picking up potting soil because we are we are going to DIY ourselves through the isolation. Things aren't crazy here yet. But there is a two per customer limit on a majority of items. I assume this means everything so we're getting two bags of each different types of soil. My husband is loading the last of eight bags on a cart when I hear her. I know it's a Karen just by the level on, of unnecessary outrage in her voice. Are you fucking kidding me? Not a lot of people out here in the garden center, but we all look to her. I was almost disappointed to see she didn't come with the resequent haircut. She actually looked like a fresh bomb. Her kid tugging on her hand and an overall hand, over full hand basket of groceries. I had a moment of, girl, I feel you. But damn it, she was pointing at us. You can't buy that many. You are hoarding. Uh, yeah, we can. We're getting two of each. Oh, you don't fool me. I know what you're doing. So do I. Fuck off. I'm just sitting there imagining all the ways I'm gonna rock his world tonight. <laughs> well, Karen huffed at that, spun around, and yanked her kid back inside to complain to the employee working the register nearby. Now, we already paid for our items. The employee had come out and scanned the bags earlier, and he could easily see a cart from outside. So being finished, we pulled the cart out of the garden center and into the parking lot. And then the automatic doors open behind us, and I hear, now they're stealing! Just great. <sighs> We load the soil in the car and turn around to bring the cart back and look at plants. By the time we get back, Karen has given up on trying to convince the employee where the body and Clyde of dirt 
is now trying to negotiate skipping somebody in line. She has a child, you see. And a hand basket. Well, it's just so full and heavy. Could she please just scooch right on in here real quick? It'll just be an extra second. She swears. The woman Karen is trying to skip is young, maybe college age, and wearing a face mask. Not a medical mask, but the stretchy kind you wear while wearing or while riding a motorcycle or when you're skiing. My husband has just informed me it's a neck gator. The mask is black and has scary wolf teeth on it that honestly made the girl look like somebody you should not fuck with. Even though she was wearing a Gap t-shirt and flip-flops. Mask girl is just shaking her head. No, and that's all I got as we dropped off the cart. I browse, pick up a couple plants, and we head inside to wait in line. Now it's showtime. Karen and Mask Girl are near the register, facing off, no pun, no pun intended. <laughs> From the looks of things, Mask Girl finished her purchase and Karen stopped her before she could leave. I don't know if she grabbed her or anything, but Karen was still holding her full hand basket, so she hadn't checked out yet. Well, she hadn't paid for her groceries yet, because clearly this woman had checked out. But you don't even need it now. You're leaving. My son could get sick because you won't give it to him. And he needs it. Hell no, you can't have it back off, lady. But my son really likes it. And it's obviously, obviously made for boys anyway. Why would you even want to wear something so scary? Because I like it. And it has my germs on it. Why would you put a stranger's mask on your kid? Because I... Uh, 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 why are you being so rude? You wouldn't let us go through the checkout first, and now you make my son very upset. Your problem, not mine. And then, Masco turns to leave, while Karen manifests the biggest balls ever, and grabs Masco by the back of her mask. Let me make a side note here. When all of this is going down, we're just standing in line and watching. The register is still going boop, boop, boop as the employee scans items, but otherwise we are all just inside this hypnotic bubble. But when Karen reaches out towards Masker, it was like the bubble popped and everything and made everything crystal clear. Not slow mo or anything, but I absolutely felt hyper aware. Like Spider Man. Karen reaches out. People on both sides of me inhale loudly. Karen grabs the mask and yanks. A lady on my right yells. And my hus husband steps forward. So good. <laughs> mask girl tucks her head down. And she turns to Karen like a pissed off bull with a bright and shiny new target. I think Karen was going to say something like, Don't walk away from me or something. But all she got was don't... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I looked at the corner. I looked around because the noise was so loud. I figured the roof was about to cave in. But out of the corner of my eye, I see Karen spasm and drop to the floor, ripping. Little Miss Masker would have a fucking taser. Nice, taser the bitch. <laughs> Whoo. I don't know when she pulled it out, this tiny little flashlight looking thing, but she laid Karen out with it. And not one of us moved for what felt like forever. Like we were frozen. And then it was fucking bedlam. Security guards showed up, more employees showed up, Moscow was chilling like she'd been through this before and knows what comes next. The kid is screaming that the wolf girl killed his mum, even though she's groaning and sobbing on the floor and clearly not dead. But maybe wishing she was. <laughs> the people that had that had been in line with us were all talking at once, trying to tell the security guard what happened. We hung around just witnessing the insanity for maybe two minutes before Karen started choking out demands for an ambulance. The police, a lawyer, the mayor, restitution and reparations. My husband made eye contact with an employee and got a thumbs up 
when he put the plants on the shelf and pointed towards the door. We got the fuck out of there. We drove home in silence until my husband parked the car in our driveway and we burst out laughing. <laughs> Neither of us had ever seen anything like that before. We live in a small beach town. People are super way back and mellow. My my hair is not playing nice. Karen was some was anything but and I hope to never see her again. ETA. Oh, okay, so that's a award and stuff. But oh there's actually some stuff here. Okay, I'm not sure not sure what the awards mean, but I thank you very much. I made this account to tell a story that happened twenty five years ago and blew my shot on a Karen instead. <laughs> so they're responding to messages, but to answer a few questions, I can't access security footage. I am, I am an unreliable narrator in what Karen's body actually did. I wasn't looking directly at her, but she flailed, fell, and squirmed while groaning. I do not know the difference between a taser and a stun gun. Mask girl look, had what looked like a thin baton flashlight. Yeah, that's a taser. We have very lax taser laws in this state. Thanks for reading. Take care of yourselves and stay safe. Okay, that was a story. Okay, next one. I am the CEO. Bear with me, people. I'm on mobile. About a year ago, I was running a small video game tournament in the small company I owned. The waitlist had a full list of 16 people. And it was fine until one person... Ruined it for all. A E P. Take a take take a guess. E K. Yeah, me El Mayo. <laughs> so we were just setting up the game when a dad ran into the store with his son. We're here for the tournament. Oh, sorry, but the list is full. Well, then make some room. I can't do that. Uh, listen, I can get you fired with a push of a button. How? I have been friends with the CEO of this company for a long time. Then, cool. I watch him make a fake phone call, then hang up. He says you're fired. That's funny, considering I am the CEO. EP's look of shock still makes me laugh to this day. Nice short got him. <laughs> Number one post of all time. My family is pressuring me to give my 23 female sister my 28 female wedding venue because she needs it more and is pregnant. Re-upload and update. So we got a big story coming up. Let's get into it. Hi guys, I posted this at uh, over at relationship advice. My update got removed, so I will post the original story, as well as the two updates here, as a big all-in-one story. Sorry for any gram grammatical and spelling errors. Ironic much, considering gr grammatical is spelt wrong. <laughs> but I'm not going to hold it against them. I had uploaded the story one time, but it was removed due to my account being younger than 120 hours. Wow. Edit. People have asked why I post this so much. The reason I just... The reason I did that, I, I just... That I want to keep you updated. This is just a... Comprimed comp story of what all happened. All of all what happened. The story on AITA was removed. Am I the a-hole? Am I the asshole? Okay, yeah. That makes sense. Because it violates rule 8. The mods on RA informed me that they had to remove it unless I can verify myself with some sort of social media. I just looked for a sub where I can keep all the beautiful people that support me so much in the loop. Guys, I appreciate you wanting to support us, but we don't need donations. We are luckily good off and have a support net around us. I appreciate the sentiment and I'm very touched by your support. And that and that is 
is all I really need. So let's start with part one. My fiance and I have been together for eight years and engaged for free. I was doing my PhD program and was juggling planning the wedding. My fiance took much of that work, but it was perfect because a dream avenue was booked until after my graduation. So we did what we did is book. Uh, oh wait, because uh, yeah. So what we did is book a dream avenue three years in advance. It was a really beautiful avenue. The only slot we could we got was September of this year. My sister got engaged a few months ago to her fiance. They were planning on having a spring wedding next year. They had no avenue. Uh, no, they had no venue lined up. But had a few vendors lined up as well as the set date. Yeah, that's that's good. Yesterday our parents invited us and uh what? SOs to a family barbecue where my sister announced to our extended family that she is expecting. Everyone was so happy for her. And my BIL, who was a great guy, brother-in-law, I guess. Uh, my nan asked my sister if the wedding was still on the set date or if they were going to wait because of the baby. She said no. She hoped to move it to September. And NDB. We don't have many out of t town guests, so they could attend to both weddings, no problem. Now I was happy and asked sister if she needed help playing such a short notice wedding. My sister then turns around and said, that's what I wanted to talk to you, you about. I was really, really hoping we could kind of take your venue. I really cannot stress, enough, stress myself too much with planning a wedding while going to maternity classes. And I think it's, it is so beautiful. It would really mean a lot to me. It went silent, but everyone was looking at me, expecting to say, "Yes, of course, any everything for my little sister." My brother-in-law, my brother-in-law looked very uncomfortable and told her they had talked about this and that it was not okay to put me on the spot. But my sister just said, "Don't be like that." My sister wants to do what's best for me, so it's no big deal, right? I just said, well, it kind of is. I don't know. I have my heart really set on the venue. Cue the crying. She stormed off. Nan told me that I was being selfish because she needed the venue more than I did. I did. Wow, even the Nan is an entire parent. I tried to defend myself and my mother said, you waited three years. We have geared you to wait a few more months. <laughs> When was your sister, when has your sister ever asked you for something? A few comments later, my fiance got really mad and we left. My sister called me crying and said that it was unfair that I always get what I want. And that I could have done this one thing for her. Dad said, it is just a venue and what matters is the person you are marrying. He is kid of right, but... He is kind of right, but we had been planning for so long. My fiance is furious with my family and doesn't want my sister to come. My Now my family is fretting not to come because I am being selfish and my sister needs it more than me because having a baby is too stressful. Okay, part two, part two. My brother-in-law called me and apologized for the inconvenience. He told me he had discussed it with my sister and she had told him she would not ask. He is properly mad with her now and warned me that my sister is blaming me for potentially ruining her marriage. My father has sent me about five texts along with the lines, I hope you are happy your sister hasn't stopped crying since yesterday, and so on and so on. My fiancé and I have decided to boot my sister from the bridal party and replace her with my aunt, who is the only fam family member who took my side. We have not decided whether or not we will invite my family as a whole 
Furthermore, my mum took it upon her to tell tell on us. She called the fiance's parents and told them that it would be best if my sister gets it because she is pregnant and preeclampsia runs in the family. Whatever that means. I don't even know what preeclampsia is either. My future father-in-law told them to fuck off and basically ripped my mum a new one for expecting something so ridiculous that they were going to lose me if they kept playing favourites. So my mum is now crying too, saying that my father-in-law is an ass. This is just getting so pathetic. It seems right out of a bad soap opera. My my in-laws are driving to us currently with some supper and wine and basically told me not to worry. And that no matter what happens, they will be my safety net. I cried with happiness. Part three. Oh, oh my goodness, I've got a fair bit to go. So it hadn't been that long. But this post blew the hell up. I was only expecting a few answers, but the support was overwhelming. What boggled my mind is that this story flooded to, over to mainstream media. But let's get to the story. So, so, since this went viral, a lot happened. My sister. My sister saw the story while browsing on her Reddit account. She lost her mind. She accused me of painting her like a loony and misinterpreting facts. Info. My sister got wind of the situation due to various media outlets and went on Reddit. She said I was being unfair. That she is family and that she asked it nicely because she loves me. She also underlines the fact that the opinion of internet strangers doesn't count because family is more important. And I should focus on making my family happy. The only text I sent back was this. I am sorry that you perceived it that way. I did not in any manner distort what happened. As you might notice, I didn't describe your tone nor exaggerated anything. Perhaps you had that night different in your mind than I do, but I digress. I am sick and tired of to bending to your will. My whole life I have been your servant and your doormat. Remember all the birthdays I had to share with you because you threw a tantrum that because you didn't get presents or when you cried that I would fill out job up so that I would fill out op job applications for you but the thing that has hurt me most till now is when you ruined my graduation I am done I admit that I also spoiled you and I would not any longer if you wanted to marry so bad before your ba baby was born, then you should look at Hotel X that offers last minute weddings. I have spent too much time planning my wedding to gift it to you. And if you want to ruin a relationship over this, then go ahead. I will sleep sound and safe knowing that it wasn't my fault. Nice. She... she she only sent me a, wow, you must love me so very much, and blocked me. She unblocked me this morning to send me this. Waiting for a hell of a deal, I got the message from your mother and will proceed with the rebooking of the venue on the spot. However, this, comes, this will have extra costs as we have to change the names on the contract. Please come by my office tomorrow so we can sign the new contract. Sister. That's great. I'll be there at nine. My parents. My parents haven't actually written to me since the thing with my father-in-law. My older brother. Yes, I have an older brother, but he lives in another city and wasn't at the barbecue. That's why I didn't mention him. Plus, he initially could not come to the wedding because of work and changed his plans after hearing about all the story. Anyway, so, so links will be in the description to both my channels and everything else that I use. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to both uh, and hit the notification bell. A ding, a ding. So you know when the next video comes out on either of them. I'm Mad Scientist, Mad Scientist.
out.